we can calculate the distance to a star using another scale called magnitudes. Now this is going to be a scale that I personally think is a bit silly, but it's extremely popular in astronomy. Now the reason I think it's a bit silly is that, well, we're going to see this, that it uses the same concept that we just did in spectroscopic parallax. You know, this idea that if you have some intrinsic property of a star, so let's say two stars have the same luminosity, when we were looking at this before, Let's say you had, you know, two stars with the same luminosity, something like, you know, let's say this is a candle, this of course could be a star, um, and I have another candle, and if I'm sort of, if I'm watching it from Earth here, so this is uh, me here, whoops, I guess I have to draw it like this, um, if I'm actually looking at it, then of course um, we're going to see then that it's going to appear a little bit differently, whoops, I guess I didn't really draw this very well, but oh well, um, it doesn't really matter this idea that if these two things have the same luminosity then the farther one is going to appear dimmer and the closer one is going to appear brighter okay so this same concept is going to be used for magnitudes except this time we're going to instead of say luminosity and apparent brightness we're going to say different things so first of all i want to teach you that um, or show you that magnitudes this is actually a, it's a logarithmic scale, first of all. So magnitudes it uses a logarithmic scale. So that means it's not linear. That means things work with powers of 10. And that tells us, uh, so logarithmic scale, to say how bright an object is, or a star is. Okay, so this is the idea behind it. Now, it's it's a little bit, I think it's sort of a backwards scale. So I'm going to write that down maybe. It's a, sort of a, what I consider sort of a backwards scale. What I mean by that is you would expect, you know, if something is really, really bright, you'd expect it to have a large value. You know, like when you're looking at luminosity. If something is very luminous, then it would have a very large luminosity, right? It would be a large value. And if something is, uh, you know, not very luminous, then it would have a low value. Or just like the apparent brightness that we see here. When we say brighter, it means, well, that means the apparent brightness here on Earth is going to be a larger value here uh, compared to the apparent brightness of this one because it's further away. But magnitudes work the opposite way. In other words, I consider it it's sort of a yeah, backwards scale. In other words, the brightest objects, I will write this down, so the brightest objects, um, those actually have smaller magnitudes. Actually, instead of brightest, I'm actually going to say brighter. So brighter objects have smaller magnitudes. It's not just the brightest that have it. I mean, something that's brighter will have a smaller magnitude which sounds kind of silly. Um, and in fact, magnitude can actually be negative, which gets really crazy sounding. And of course, uh, dimmer objects. So you'd think, oh, that means the apparent brightness should be less. But actually, we're going to say that no. If we're talking about magnitudes, uh, dimmer objects have larger magnitude values. So that's what I mean by a backward scale. I think, you know, something brighter should have a larger value, but no, it's a smaller magnitude. And dimmer things have larger magnitudes. Uh, maybe it helps to do an example. So maybe I'll give you that. So let's just see a few examples of these things. So if we do, maybe this is sort of magnitude here. We'll do like a little table, maybe. Yeah, that'll work. Do some sort of table. And over here, we'll just say sort of some sort of description somehow. So we can just give some examples of things. Now something that um, is very, very dim, for example, magnitude 21, that's extremely dim. So this is something that, you know, we can't, we can't even see this uh, with a naked eye. In other words, you would totally need a telescope for this. So you need actually a pretty good telescope, in fact, to see this. So this is something, you know, magnitude 21 is actually really, really dim. Um, so that means we can't really see it with our own eye. We need something, some help, so some sort of telescope of some kind. Um, a magnitude of 7, for example, um, 
that's usually the limit of what whoops, of what the naked eye can see. That's usually the limit. It all depends on you and how you are, but that's usually the limit. Now, a uh, magnitude of 2, for example, that's something that's actually, um, yeah, it could be something that's, I don't know, something like Saturn, maybe. Uh, Saturn is something, which is a planet, by the way. The planet Saturn has a magnitude of 2, which means it's actually, it's fairly bright. See, we're getting, what's weird is we're getting brighter here. So this, maybe I'll write this down over here, this is dimmer. It doesn't appear very much in the sky. And down here, we're going to say brighter. Now, the numbers that we're going to be using, by the way, we're going to go to um, the next one, actually, we can say is zero. That's actually defined as Vega. So the star Vega actually has a magnitude of zero. Now, we're going to talk about if we mean absolute or apparent, we're going to talk about the difference. But just so you know, at least, it's considered zero here. And actually, I'm going to say that that's going to be the apparent magnitude, actually. I better add that. So in other words, what we detect here on Earth, these are what different things we have. Apparent magnitude. Um, now, this is the problem, though. When they did this sort of scale, it turns out that you can have things that are even brighter than the star Vega. You're like, oh, crap, what do I do then? How do I make something brighter than zero? Well, if your scale goes down as you're brighter, you can just go to negative. So it turns out negative 1, for example, is uh, the star Sirius. And Sirius is actually the brightest star. So it's actually quite bright. You could say, hey, does Sirius appear as bright as Saturn? Nope, it's brighter because it has a smaller value than Saturn. See, Saturn has 2, Sirius is negative 1, which is less than 2. So anything down on this scale here is brighter. Um, maybe if we have something like uh, negative 4, that's the planet Venus. So remember, Sirius is a star, Vega is a star, but Saturn is a planet, Venus is a planet. Now what's interesting though is you might think, oh, do these all, all give off light? Well, stars emit light, so Sirius and Vega actually emit light, whereas Saturn and Venus and Jupiter and other planets, they actually don't emit much light. In fact, they reflect it. Um, technically, some of them actually can emit a little bit, but it's not really very much. So they, they mainly reflect light from the sun. So the sun's light sort of bounces off Saturn and then comes to us, and that makes it appear bright. Um, now, even brighter than that, let's say negative 13, that's a full moon. So it just gives you an idea. Okay, full moon is pretty bright, right? That can light up the sky pretty well. And something like negative 26, well, that's the sun. So just to give some idea of some of these values where they can lie. So it's a backward scale, remember that. So a magnitude of 21, you might think, oh, that's really bright. Nope, it's really dim. Whereas a magnitude of like negative something or even zero, something that's low, that's actually fairly bright. Okay, so that is what's really important, I think, about this sort of backwards scale. Now, astronomers use this scale all the time. So when you're actually looking at things, in fact, we do different magnitudes depending on the filter we're using. So we can have different color magnitudes. It gets kind of complicated sounding, but it uses this sort of idea here. So we have two main definitions. We have apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. So I'm going to give you the, um, the actual symbol first. So apparent magnitude is written as little m, and it has no units. You know, where before we had apparent brightness, and that had units of watts per meter squared. This little m has no units, so it's apparent magnitude. Now, what that means, this is how bright it appears on Earth. That's hopefully making sense, because apparent, uh, that implies something that appears. So, how bright it appears on Earth. In other words, look up at the sky, how bright does it look? Does it look really bright? Then it has uh, that apparent magnitude. Remember, if it looks really bright, that means it has a low value because of this negative scale. So as we go back over here, though, we can take a look how bright it appears on Earth. All right, that's fairly straightforward. But the next one, however, is a little bit weird. The absolute magnitude, this is sort of equivalent to the luminosity. Okay, so this is some sort of intrinsic property of a star. And again, this capital M also has no units. Okay, but we use we use the letter M, little m for that. We use big M for absolute magnitude. 
Now this one might sound really weird here. This is defined as how bright it would appear oops, that's supposed to be a P here how bright it would appear if it was at a distance and this is totally arbitrary so a uh, distance of 10 parsecs so this is really kinda weird uh, and I'll say away from Earth so this is some sort of intrinsic property this tells us something about you know how bright is it really because again what if it's a really bright star but it's really close uh, sorry really far away it might appear really dim but a bright star that's really close to us will appear will appear very bright right so it sort of tells you about this is this is sort of equivalent to we were learning this before let's put it in green like this this is like apparent brightness and this over here that's like luminosity in fact these are these are similar to each other in fact we use the same idea All right so this is some sort of intrinsic property of the star this luminosity tells you how much does it really emit well that is the absolute magnitude whereas this one here was what you detect on earth that's what you detect on earth okay now I'm going to just uh, remove these because I don't want to confuse things here so if we look at this then uh, this may seem really arbitrary and it kind of is what we do is we say if we took this star and we placed all other stars including this one all at the same distance away then we could really compare which stars are actually more luminous couldn't we because if we actually saw well if they're all placed at the same distance away then one that appears brighter would actually be you know more luminous in other words it would kick out more stuff and right? it would have more uh, power emitted or you could say it would have more energy per unit time those are all the same thing. So this sounds like a really arbitrary thing. And I'm going to show you the equation, actually, that we use. Okay, so here's how we use the method. The method that we use, well, it uses this equation right here. So it goes like this. M minus capital M. That means apparent magnitude minus absolute magnitude equals 5 times the log of, in this case, it's D over 10. So this is the equation that we use here. This is it. This is the important one. Let me just see if I can actually write in different uh, type of pen here. So I want to make this seem really important. Can I do this? Yeah. So I'm going to put this in sort of stars. Haha, <laughs> see, we're looking at stars. So this is the equation that we need to use. Maybe I better get back to the regular pen here. So what do these things mean again? A little m is the apparent magnitude. I like to write everything all together just to make sure that we have it all in one place so it's really clear. Capital M is the absolute magnitude. Again, no units. That's why I'm not saying in meters or whatever else. It's just an arbitrary scale. Log is just a mathematical function. You can take the log of something. And D, well, that's the distance to the star. But it's important that you know the units. So here it's in parsec. So it is not in meters. That's important. The distance to the star is measured in parsec if you use this equation here. I've seen lots of different versions of this equation, but they all essentially are doing the same thing. Now, if we go back to this definition that we had of absolute magnitude, we said it's how bright it would appear if it was at a distance of 10 parsec away from Earth. What I'm going to do, I want to just show you what that means here. In other words, what I'm saying is that capital M here is what the apparent magnitude would be if the distance was 10. So let's just try, just for fun, to set, set D equals to 10. Just sort of, it's just as a test. This is actually for absolute magnitude. So absolute magnitude so let's just sort of test that out. So if we set d equal to 10 parsec, what would we get? Well, we would have m minus big M equals 5 times log of 10 divided by 10. That's what we would have. Now, 10 divided by 10, that would give us then that m minus m equals 5 times log of 1. Now, what log really means, this is a little bit complicated if you've ever, ever seen logs before. What this means, this is actually, this is implying we're writing this in log base 10. 
What this really means is that we're saying 10 to the power of what gives us 1. That's really what log of 1 means. That means 10 to the power of question mark equals 1. Well, if I say 10 to the power of 1, I get 10. That doesn't work. 10 to the power of 2 gives me 100. Oop, that doesn't work. 10 to the power of 0, however, anything to the power of 0 is always 1. So what that does, that tells me that log of 1 equals 0. And because of that, that means this thing right here cancels out. So now I have, well, 0 times 5 is also 0. Right? So even though this 5 stays there, 0 times 5, that makes this whole thing cancel out. That means I have m minus m equals 0. And if I want to then maybe uh, move this around, I can say, therefore, m equals m. See what happens? So the absolute magnitude, it's defined such that it works with this equation. See, if I set the distance to the star as 10 parsec, then I end up with the absolute magnitude equals the apparent magnitude. That's why we could actually go back here then. Instead of saying how bright it would appear, we could also state, um, or we could say um, that absolute magnitude equals the apparent magnitude if d equals 10 parsec. Right? That's just sort of a more compact way to say just that. That the absolute magnitude is what the apparent magnitude would be if the distance was 10 parsec. So that is how we can work with these. Now this scale seems really weird, and it kind of is, and if you're not used to using logs, maybe you get a little bit confused, but if just take your time. If you're not sure how to work with logs, you can also just use a calculator, right? You can always just say, what is the log of 1? You could ask your calculator that. And log of 1 is 0. I just wanted to show you sort of how it works here. It's because uh, this is implied to be log base 10, and 10 to the power of something is 1. And the only thing that the something is, that's got to be a 0. That's sort of how logs work. Um, if you're not sure how that works, maybe go see my videos on uh, mathematics because there I explain logarithms. But hopefully this makes some sense. Even though it seems like a backward scale, this scale uses the same exact property as the um, apparent brightness and luminosity method. It's, uh, and it uses the same idea that something that's farther away will appear dimmer and something that's closer will appear brighter um, if they had the same intrinsic property. So in this case would be luminosity, or in this case would be the absolute magnitude.